and you can get started. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening, Councillor Fred. Um, so I think we have a quorum. And so I would like to call the meeting to order. But I'd also like to confirm that I can be heard and that I can hear you. And so I'll call on Councillor Ryan. I'm here. I can I can be heard. And President Grisma. I go by Lynn for the council. <laughs> and thank you. I can be I can hear you and you can hear me. Okay. And so the meeting is being recorded. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Athena. We're recording. I think first order is to see if there is, are there any public comments? And right now there aren't any attendees. And so maybe we could check back at some other points, but we'll go straight into the committee business. The first thing that we'll be looking at is, or the first item is going to be Asian Pacific, Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month proclamation. So any thoughts on Oh, I need I, editing? I'm trying to do too many things at once. Hold on. Okay. Uh I I'm trying to put my hand up, which I will do in a moment. A hand raise hand. There we go. Lena. Thank you. Uh I uh want to point out that I have added in the packet that Councillor Rooney is a sponsor, and also that the community sponsors are Dr. Shalini Balmilne, Dr. Linda Hill, Evan Owens, and Liam Duane. And uh, I believe that we will find out that the Human Rights Commission and the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Office are also sponsors, but we need to confirm that with them. Okay. Okay. And then I have one, I have two changes that have been requested uh, by um, Shalini Balmilne. And the first of those is the fifth whereas, and at the end where it says devoted community members. She suggests that we add enriching the fabric of our Amherst community with cultural events, such as the spring celebrating, spring festival celebrating the Lunar New Year, New Year and the fall South Asian Festival of Lights celebrating Diwali, which showcase the rich tapestry of Asian traditions and then colon and and. Do you want me to read that again? <laughs> I accidentally typed yes instead of saying yes. Yes, please. Okay. Lunar so, New Year. So after, in the fifth one, after the word members. Yes, okay. I have members enriching the fabric of our Amherst community, such as... Uh, this, enriching the fabric of our Amherst community with cultural events such as the spring 
festival celebrating the Lunar New Year mm -hmm. and the Fall South Asian Festival of Lights celebrating Diwali, D-I-W-A-L-I, -I, capital D with that comma, which continue, yes, which showcase the rich mm -hmm. tapestry of Asian traditions, semicolon and. And then I have one other one. And that is on the now therefore, after the sentence ending in I Islander Heritage Month, the first sentence. Sorry, is Asian capitalized? Here? Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. And now we're to the now we're, therefore? Now therefore, after the first sentence that ends in the word month is a period, and then it says, we urge all residents of Amherst capital we all yeah to learn more about the history of asian americans and pacific islanders in our community and nation comma and to commit to working toward a more equitable and inclusive Amherst for all, period. And then begin, get rid of the word and, and say we further encourage, get rid of the word urge, AAPI, organizations. And then the rest is the same. Okay. Councillor Ryan. Thank you, Dean. So I have two suggestions I'd like to make, two edits, if it's agreeable to the committee and to the sponsor. Actually, the sponsor's not here, but anyway. Well, um, the sponsor's not here, but I've I worked with the group sure. to yeah. get it here. Yeah. I'm I'm looking at the fourth whereas clause. This was written, I think, um, at a time when COVID-19 was a pandemic. While COVID-19 hasn't disappeared, we're no longer in a pandemic. So I was going to suggest um, in that last clause, and as peacetime healthcare heroes who served, remove the word currently, and insert who served and then delete currently. I think that would um, still convey the intent, which I think is excellent, but also bring Great. it more into time frame. Great. The second suggestion is probably more controversial. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seventh, whereas clause, despite their contributions and leadership. Um, I am going to make the request that the second, first of all, this is more than one sentence, which we try to avoid if we can in whereas clauses. Uh, secondly, um, I would like to or suggest we delete the second sentence in its entirety, um, beginning with the resilience and all the way to the end. Um, the, the whereas clause makes the point that Despite their contributions and leadership, the role of AAPI individuals in the U.S. has been consistently overlooked and undervalued. And I think that's a, that's a statement and one I actually would, could endorse. The rest of it is not really, um, uh, I just, it's not really part of a whereas clause, I don't think. And um, I've got, I just think that this is already wordy enough. And um, I think all the other whereas clauses are fairly on target. I don't see how this uh, really belongs here. As a word, just clause. check one item. I'll be right with you, George. I want to check last year's because I didn't see a redlined edited copy, 
and I want to make sure that this was um how do I get that government um tickets. um hold on proclamations there we go I guess, again, just to my point, the pronouns in this second sentence, we, us, um, I'm not at all clear who that's referring to. Athena? Oh, I see. This was what it was last time? I'm I'm checking that right oh, now. Sorry. I just was having a little. Yes, this problem. is the the proclamation that was voted last year, and that sentence was in it that way. I don't think it's there. Um, it's not there. No, it wasn't. A, which means the month, not there. <laughs> Which right. means that the sponsors this year added it. Yeah. Um, I think we could remove it. I'd yeah, like... I just, it doesn't seem, it doesn't really like the wear us clothes. Um, it's nothing wrong with the sentiment, but it doesn't seem to be appropriate to a. Um, Do you think we could move it to now, therefore? Uh, I mean, it, I mean, it, it, I don't know what to say. Uh, this, it, first of all, it's a multiple sentences. It's not just, it's, it's three or four sentences. As we celebrate the achievements and contributions of Asian American and Pacific Islanders that enrich our history, society, and culture, let us also recognize the strength that comes from unity. It just doesn't, I don't, this, yeah. Maybe I'm the only one, but I don't see how this is relevant okay. to, yeah. You know, um, and the sponsors enlarge, aren't here, but that's not our fault. Yeah. Could you lo enlarge yeah. it on the screen? Yeah. And this one we're looking at is. Let's keep scrolling. Oh, this is the old one. This is the old one. This is 23. Yeah, this is it's not in here. It doesn't. It's this not in added. here. It's got added, and I'm suggesting so, that we delete it. Could we go back to the new one? Okay. That's been done. Um, George, could you lower your hand? Um, I suppose we could delete it. Yeah, I mean, it just, it makes a point, and then it goes into a series of sort of generalized feel-good statements, which, you know, it's really not making a specific point. Um, so could it be under the now, therefore? I think... Um... George. Or could it be a new whereas? Whereas um, resilience and perseverance.
I would suggest that. Yeah, I'm sorry. I I'm trying to look at two screens. Well, again, as there, we've yeah. seen, it was not in the resolution, any previous resolution. Right. I assume if it wasn't in last year, it wasn't in anything before. So it's been added to this year. And mm -hmm. I guess my objection is it actually doesn't add anything. Um, it should be, if it's going to be in here, it should have to be a separate whereas clause. Um, but unlike the other whereas clauses, which highlight a specific accomplishment or claim or fact or something else, it's just a series of, of sort of generalized nice statements. And I, I just object to it. So I think it just should come out. And if the sponsors don't like it, I don't know, but I just, uh, it, it, if you create another whereas clause, you'd say, whereas the resilience and perseverance of the AAP community stand as a testament to the power of coming together. <laughs> and, there, yeah. and therefore, as we celebrate the achievements and, and, and Whereas we celebrate achievement of the Asian Muslims, I mean, that's what we're doing. I mean, it's already been stated. Um, and let us, I guess then you'd have let us recognize that strength comes from unity. And I don't even know what that, I mean, I, I guess I know what that means, but that could be applied to a thousand and one things um, and doesn't seem to be specific to this very fine proclamation. Then a new thought, whereas by embracing diversity, advocating for justice and sharing our stories, we install solidarity and drive positive change together. Again, it's, it's a, a lovely sentiment, but doesn't seem relevant to this particular uh, proclamation. And whereas the first sentence is perfectly relevant and makes a very good point. So I, again, I would suggest that we just take it out. And I'm reluctant because it, it was put in by the sponsors this year. Yeah, um, here. <laughs> so. No, I know that. Right. So I don't know what I can do. What's the name? I would I would suggest we try to make another whereas with it. And even though it's somewhat so Councilor Ette, call on yourself. I'd like to speak. I I think it is I think it's all right if we leave it as it is. Because I to quote um, another councillor, we aren't stylists. And I do agree that we could have better style in this case, but there must have been a reason why the, the sponsors put this in from last year. Um, so I think if it doesn't change, if, if it fulfills the clarity that we are expecting and actionability and everything else, then it might be okay, despite our grievances about style to just keep it as it is. Yes, Lynn. George, would you be more comfortable if we take the second sentence there and make it another whereas? I don't think this is an issue of style. Um... Again, we would have to create a new whereas clause just, just to be consistent and to be clear. Mm -hmm. So um, as it stands, I don't think it's clear. Um, and it's not consistent with our practice with whereas clauses. So um, I don't think we want to beat this to death. We can just go ahead to a vote. Um, I will probably abstain. But um, I, it's, I don't see it as a stylistic issue. I see it as, um, you know, again, this is ultimately our proclamation. It's not the sponsor's proclamation. Um, it goes out under our name. And um, we invite sponsors to come. We encourage them to come. 
when they're present, we work with them. And um, but when they're not here, there isn't much we can do. And um, I agree with uh, Councillor Ette that um, we shouldn't get into stylistic debates. Wording is is you know let them word it as they like. But in this case, it's multiple sentences, and I don't think it is clear actually what the point is. Um, and if it if we're going to make it clear, we're going to have to create new whereas clauses, and we're going to have to do a whole bunch of editing. Um, so, but I've made this point, so I'm going to stop. So I would just suggest we do it with an edit. Okay. And uh, what would you recommend by having a new whereas? So after the word history, you would have a semicolon and an and, and then a new whereas. And I would say, as we celebrate the achievements, I would take that whole first, that whole next sentence and put it up first. I don't know. I'd, I'd probably even make another whereas. And use the next sentence by embracing diversity, advocating for justice. So in other words, take the last sentence and meld it into one sentence. There needs to be something else in there. Change together. Well, the semicolon would in that clause would yeah. become a comma, and then perhaps it could stand. I'm sorry, semicolon. Get rid of there. Make yeah, that just a make comma. it a comma. Right? Yeah. The resilience. So the point is, the resilience and perseverance of this community stand as a testament to the power of coming together. Yeah. Yeah. All right stands since it's community would in this case be singular so stands stands thank you good thank you and s goes there yep thank you are we ready for a motion before we have the motion may 19th 2024, I believe there should be a comma. Does this satisfy you, uh, Councillor Ryan? Yes, thank you. So in that case, could someone make a motion? Lynn. I move that we recommend this to the town council as clear, consists, consistent, and actionable. Do we have a second? I second. Okay. So we'll have a vote, and I'll start with Councillor Ryan. Aye. Lynn? Aye. And um, an aye as well. That is three. Yeses and no no's. We'll move on to the next agenda item, but um, if you would bear with me, I wanted to see if we could move the discussion on a new time to 6.30 as 
if we could move that up since I don't think there is a lot of objection to, to that. So. Yes, um, Lynn. So in other words, we're going to move the meetings to 6.30. Yes, propose a change to 6.30. I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. Thank you. We are missing two of our members. I'm fine with it too. And I guess it's just a matter of whether the other two are fine with it. Because if somebody's not fine with it, we have a problem. But I'm assuming they are, but there's only three of us tonight. So I guess we could approve it provisionally. And then if somebody has an objection. Lynn? I wondered whether Athena had heard from either of the other two. Um, my understanding from our previous conversations was that all the members preferred the 6.30 meeting time. Okay. Good. Thank you, Athena. I don't think there needs to be a lot of discussion. I think there were two holdouts that preferred it at 7.30. I was provisionally 7.30 um, and circumstances have changed. Um, as well. I think 6.30 should be fine with me mm -hmm. and with Athena as well. Um, and so if that's the case, could I have someone make a motion to propose a change? Athena's hand is up. Yes, Athena. I was just going to help with the motion to to change the, the meeting time. So it would be a motion to amend the GOL meeting schedule to change the start time from 7.30 to 6.30. So moved. Second. So could I have uh, Lynn? Aye. George? Aye. And I'm an aye. Thank you. So we're moving to number four, which is the topic is non-voting finance committee member appointment recommendation to town council and the first thing we have to consider is if the pool of applicants is sufficient i think last meeting we agreed it wasn't has anything changed from that position brian george so we have a third applicant we now have three applicants is that sufficient i I don't know the answer to that question, but we at least have one new applicant. We now have three applicants. Lynn. Thank you. Uh, we have one position that's vacant right now, and we have three applicants for that position. The thing that's going to stump us, stump us, meaning make it difficult is we may have as many as two additional openings. We don't know yet for sure about Matt and we won't know immediately. And I am I am I correct that Bernie's term is up or not, Athena? Yes, Athena. Um, Bernie's term is up at the end of June. Matt's term is not up at the end of June. I think he has a separate issue. I think. Yes. He does. And uh, again, it's not final that he would have to go off finance, but there's a possibility. But I would, I would like to move that we have three, you know, that we have a, a sufficient pool uh, because we have three candidates for one position. Before I call on George, is there a second? Okay. We may revisit that, but George. Depending on the answer to this question, I might be willing to second that motion, but I need an answer to the question. Um, or at least some discussion of it. 
Um, is it allowed, permissible? Does it make any sense for us, if we move ahead with the three applicants for the position that's currently vacant, which will end on June 30th, to also then offer them a, a term for beyond, in other words, June 30th, and then for the next um, two years after that? Can we do that? Is that permissible? Maybe. First of all, are they two or three year terms? I think they're three. Athena? She's checking. And um, we have done that in the past. I, my recollection, either that or we have immediately asked, are they willing to continue to serve? And then we basically said, okay, that position's filled, we still have the other two. The other option is we just wait, but we're gonna have to start interviewing for the ones that expire in June soon anyway, so. Athena? In my list, it shows that both Matt's term ends in 2025 and so does the vacant position. So if the committee were to make a recommendation and the council appoint to fill the vacancy, that term would expire in 2025. Um, and then I believe they're two-year terms. I'm checking now. So um, a new appointment for Bernie's impending vacancy at the end of June would go to 2026. Um, and I'm not sure that the committee can really discuss a vacancy that hasn't been vacated yet. Two years for non-voting members. Lynn? I believe once the person makes it known, there. here's the issue with Bernie. Bernie has served two two two-year terms, okay? One of the questions that we should ask ourselves is whether or not it's okay for somebody to be on finance for three two-year terms. And that's one question. And then is he even willing to serve for a third term? Um, the second issue is, and I might withdraw my motion based on what I'm about to say, and that is, it might be more fair to just clarify with Bernie, clarify with Matt, and come back to this in two weeks, and then know whether or not we're trying to fill two or three positions, and just do them all at once. Because they're not going to be the people that we appoint now aren't going to be able to sit in on the budget review this year anyway. Um, it's that's starting that literally starts in a week. Um, so sorry, I'm not leaving. I'm just cold. <laughs> um, um, so I, I'm I'm I think it's worth some discussion. Would it be better for us to just since we've waited so long to just interview and then appoint, but I believe that if we appointed somebody um, for a small term, like two months, we could appoint for the following. We just did that with zoning board. Yeah, with ZBA. So. Good. If I understood Athena, what she was telling us is that the current vacancy actually expires in 2025. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? So, okay. I, I just, is that correct? I, I, I'm just wondering, is that is correct or not? I don't know. Yeah, I think I think I said yes, 2020. Okay, I, I couldn't hear it. Thank you. So we're looking at one position that vacates in 2025. Um, and everything else is speculation, as Athena pointed out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if Lynn wants to keep her motion 
and it is, I guess, the motion is uh, still on the floor, mm -hmm. or is it is it dead? It is. It is. It, it is. is still on the floor. Um, I'm willing to second it. No, wait a minute. Did I can you I? say is Athena? Did you say it's not? Yeah, I think it, with failing to get a second, it probably is dead. But I imagine it can be resuscitated. It could be. I think it will. Okay, I'll resuscitate it. How's that? <laughs> okay. And the resuscitated motion, I would second. Um, since we aren't dealing with speculation, um, Lynn, could you restate the motion? Yes. I move that we declare the pool sufficient for the position of non-voting resident of the Finance Committee for a term ending in June 2025. And I second that motion. Thank you. So we will have a discussion. And before that, Lynn, um, Athena. I always want to hear what Athena has to say first. Just pointing out that the, the um, whatever is going on with Matt is speculative, speculative, but the there is the vacancy coming up at the end of June this year, and that is impending. It's not a speculation; it will happen. <laughs> so we know for sure there's two vacancies. We we there is a current vacancy, and there it will be a vacancy on July first. And so if the committee wanted to declare the applicant pool sufficient at this point, and then um, try to fill both positions, you can still accept community activity forms and you can still um, accept statements of interest up until two, two or so days before the interview date. Um, and in that time, the chair or the chair's designee could reach out to existing members and see if they're willing to continue to serve after their term expires. There's a part, it's part of the policy, multiple member body recommendation policy. Lynn. Uh, yes, I want to clarify when we say continue to serve until someone else is named or for another term. Um, so it's a it's part of the reappointment process that's listed in the policy. So if there is a member whose term is expiring, then part of the process is to ask the member if they'd like to continue to serve. They would resubmit their CAF or statement. I have to look at the policy to, to clarify that, but it's part of the process to ask that existing member if they'd like to serve another term, not extend their term. Josh. So I'm going to suggest that we just proceed step by step, um, piece by piece. And the immediate piece that now has three applicants is the one that runs through June 2025 and that we go ahead and um, fill that position or interview three candidates and see if we can find one that we can recommend to the council then we know that there will be an impending vacancy and we will have to uh, start the process again. Um, but I think trying to do two at once with only three candidates, I let's, let's just do this one and then we'll try again and hopefully we'll get uh, uh, more than two applicants. Thank you, Lynn. I think the question that we need to answer um, is, is, are we willing to have a finance committee member serve more than two two-year terms? I will tell you what my answer is. My answer is yes. And that means that if if you followed my answer, then we would ask Bernie if he was willing to serve another two-year term. And if he is, then I don't think we have to go through the interview process, do we? I 
Athena? It, it would be in the policy. Um, it's in the policy. I can look it up. If okay. you if the committee is interested in trying to fill both the existing vacancy and the vacancy that is going to exist on July 1st, you could interview for both the charter of the um, community resources committee just made a recommendation to the council that the council voted at the last meeting to fill vacancies on the zoning board of appeals for both existing positions and positions that will be vacant in on July 1st. Um, so the this committee could, could follow the same process. Whether or not uh, an existing member is willing to serve another term, in my opinion, doesn't matter in this conversation because it's, you know, either you're either considering a um, new member and interviews or asking that member to see if they'd like to make another term, but there's not currently a, a policy about term limits. Thank you, George. So in crafting that policy, my pretty clear recollection is that the message was that there's no such thing as a guaranteed spot. Um, we give obviously great weight to the fact that someone has served and that often, but it's not, we don't guarantee anybody anything. And the fact that, that Bernie served for two terms um, we're deeply appreciative, and we ask as a courtesy if they are interested in continuing, and if they say yes, um, they are put in the pool with everybody else. But they're saying yes does not guarantee them um, acceptance, um, and that's been my understanding of what we've done um, to deal with the issue of term limits. Um, the assumption is six years is thought of as being, you know, in most cases, that it's not hard and fast, but the vast majority of cases, six years seems to be the maximum that we expect. And at that point, we're looking for fresh blood. Um, but the fact that you've served for two years or four years in and of itself on any body that we appoint doesn't guarantee you that you'll be uh, recommended to serve again. Um, and that's where we make people reapply. Okay. Um, I think I have something on the screen. Just sharing this section of the policy. Mm -hmm. So a committee or board member is under no obligation to seek or accept reappointment nor is the recommending committee obligated to recommend reappointment to a resident seeking it. So this is all well and good. I, I think we have a motion on the floor and the motion is whether we can declare the pool sufficient so we can begin the process for the vacancy that currently exists. Great. Any final comments? In that case, we'll start with the votes. Councillor Ryan. Aye. Lynn. Aye. And I'm an aye as well. So that passes three yeses and no noes. So since we've done that, could we take a stab at the selection guidance? According to my notes, that was approved on February 22nd. Oh, it was already approved. That's my what my notes say. Um, I'm assuming Athena can confirm that, but we voted on this according to my notes on February 22nd. But we did not vote, I believe, on the interview questions. That's what my notes say, but I could be corrected. I think we can check that. So 
we'll skip that for now. Thank you. Good. So could we go to the interview questions then? Yes, if they could be put up on the screen. Um, thank you, Matthew. Thank you. And if I remember correctly, unlike the charter review, because we have so few candidates, we were open to having more questions for um, finance committee, but let's still go ahead and look at the questions as they exist. Councillor Ryan. Exactly my point, Councillor Ate, was that since there are so few candidates, we're perhaps less concerned about the number of questions, but it would be nice if we could shrink them, but um, these have been used a lot. They seem to work pretty well, but um, yes, let's, let's go through them. Any thoughts about question? Actually, let me back up. So one way we could look at this is go question by question yes. or just look at all of them and figure out which should go based on an eye test. I think we should maybe take a minute and look at all of them and see what stands out as something that could go or what stays. Lynn? When people are finished, I'll... I believe you can go ahead. I figure, I think this, this set of questions works just fine. The reality is by the time you get to six, you're pretty much done and the rest is you know just you know tying it up mm -hmm. um i'm not inclined to mess with the questions thank you maybe george i pretty much in agreement with, with lynn i guess based on lynn's experience my memories after two years has gotten pretty dim um, whether number four is really all that informative. It's a nice question, but um, the others seem fairly focused on the nature of this body and I think could elicit some interesting responses. Lynn, do you feel that four is worth the time for people to write or speak to it and might give us information or do you feel it, it's it's... How much information do we really get from four? Yeah. Um, given the nature of the budgets, for instance, that we're embarking on right now, I think four is pretty important. Okay. You think it can tell us something? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I agree the question in abstracts can tell us um, something. It just has been my observation that when the question is asked, you definitely don't hear about opinions that are in conflict or decisions that are controversial. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody seems to get along when we get to this question, um, but the question itself is a good one. And if it's been used, and since it has been used, I think we could keep that in. Well, I'm prepared to make a motion. Just a moment, this is a question for Athena. If the interview questions, if we make a motion and that gets approved, does that trigger anything going forward? 
Uh, no, the deadline for the statements of interest isn't set until you choose interview dates because the deadline is uh, a couple days before the, the deadline for statements of interest is a couple days before the interviews. So that clock doesn't start ticking until you set that interview date. Okay. Thank you, Athena. Um, we welcome the motion. Uh, could you just scroll down, Athena, for just a bit? I just wanted to take a quick look and everyone else. Um, I didn't really look at the uh, formalities. Three minutes. The chair will ask the questions. Here we will have everyone together and we'll go in order. But we'll change it up each time. So everyone's okay with that? I am. I don't have, I, since there's so few, I don't have a problem with it. I do object to it when you have many, many people, but um, we could do each person individually as we're going to hopefully do with the uh, um, charter review. I don't know if people have strong feelings one way or the other. So, so giving people yeah, a specific time to come and we ask them the questions, then we go on to the next person. So could we have a motion? Well, I'm prepared to make my motion, but I just I just want to be sure everyone's okay with the way this is because uh, we're adopting, I take it also the format. Um, is that correct? In other words, the the four bullet points at the bottom. And I just want to make sure people are okay with that. It sounds like they are, but I just, I was asking. So then I'm going to move that we adopt um, these interview questions for the finance committee applicant interviews as presented along with the uh, format presented. Is this second? A raised hand, I think, counts as... Second. Yes, second. Thank you, Lynn. We could move straight to a vote. So... Lynn? Aye. George? Aye. Thank you. So we have, sorry. <laughs> I am an I as well. Oh, so that makes- We're two to nothing in one absent, right? <laughs> yeah, that makes three yeses and the, we can approve these questions for the interviews. Given that we have two members of the committee that are not available at the moment, I request that we point on an interview date. Would that be acceptable to everyone? Lynn. Uh, it's acceptable, but I think it would be useful for us to poll now. Okay. You know, to poll them and we meet, I'm, I want to make sure I have the dates correct. We meet on May 9th, and we also meet on May 23rd. Correct? And I'm wondering if we could just um, see what our attendance for the committee looks like on either of those nights. The 23rd probably would be best. Thank you, Lynn. Any thoughts, George? There's just a, uh, we have the SOIs. I think this gives us more than enough time. Um, it'd be nice to do it during a regular scheduled meeting. I think normally we try to do that with FinCom because it's usually not that many candidates. So I have no objection. But it's going to be the chair, I think, who's going to have to uh, go through her elaborate, because we also have the uh, charter review, which is 
and a whole bunch of other things going on. But yes, I think 2030 is fine. And I guess we could just tell her that that's the consensus of the three of us, that we'd a, like to be during a regular scheduled committee meeting, and the 23rd looks very good. So if I have you um, correctly, this interview would preferably be on a regular scheduled meeting. It isn't a decision since we're not voting on it, but it at least sets a bit that the other members and the chair could look at as something that is possible. Would you agree with that, um, then? Okay. I... Athena's hand is up. Oh, Athena. Um, because applicants can't be considered for an appointment if they can't make the interview date, I'm going to suggest that you hold off on an, actually setting an interview date until the chair has an opportunity to communicate with applicants and make sure that they can attend on that date. Um, the committee can't consider, like I said, the committee can't consider an applicant who can't make the interview. So it's important to make sure that everybody can attend before. You, um, so it, it's not spelled out in the policy. In the policy, it says that the chair should give the applicant seven days notice. But in the past, we've we've always checked. The chair has always checked with applicants to make sure before the date is set. Thank you. I think this is one of those cases where a low number is actually beneficial. It makes it easier to reach a date that would be acceptable to everyone. So I think um, we have concluded with um, the Finance Committee recommendations, or at least that part of the agenda. We're moving on to the Charter Review Committee appointment recommendations. I believe we declared the pool sufficient already. We also have approved the selection guidance. Yes. And so we're moving on to the interview questions. Athena. Sorry, I took my hand down. Good. So just a recap. Um, we have a lot of candidates, and so we're looking to shrink the questions. We were aiming for about five, if I'm correct. And one of the, the, the chair recommended that one of the questions stays, and that would be the final question. But I would like us to take a look at what we have right now and see if there are any of the questions that we wouldn't mind taking out. So let me just throw this out, see what people make of it. What if we could take questions one and two? I think we all agree there should be some question about the charter and their understanding of the charter. Um, maybe this is cheating, but taking starting with, if you began with what is your understanding of the role of the Charter Review Committee, question mark. Are there any particular areas that you so make that into one question and delete the first clause? What is your experience with the charter? And so um, it would still be one question. And it's focused on their understanding of the role of the Charter Review Committee and their sort of thoughts, if they have any to share with us on what they see as strengths, weaknesses or missing elements. Lynn. 
I just want to make sure I have it correct. So in other words, the it would be one question and it would be what is presently in number two as the first question. Is the, and right. Then the second question in number one would be the other part of it. Okay, that's fine with me. That's what I'm suggesting, yeah. Okay, could we make that edit? Would you please repeat that change? Sure, uh, Athena, what I'm suggesting is take number two, the, what is your understanding, take that entire question and bring it to the very beginning of number one, make that the beginning of one, and then delete the second sentence, what is your experience with the charter, just delete that, and that's it. So the current question too. I like this one. Um, I don't know how this feel. Um, it, it references the selection guidance. So that I thought was an excellent suggestion. Um, gives us a sense of whether they've actually read the selection guidance or not. Um, and then addresses experience and skills. I like it. And question three. Dot. This is my baby, so I'm I'm a, perhaps too attached to it. I really would like what others think about this. Um, it, I think you could take it out. Um, and I'm not sure it would do any real damage. Um, so, and I, I hate to say that because I'm the one who pushed for this, but um, I wonder what the other two of you think about whether this would really tell us much that we really need to know. Lynn. I'm fine with that question. Since it is tentative, we could look at four and five since... Yeah, I want to look at four and five and five and see if we can consolidate. I'm sorry, I shouldn't say that. No, that's sounds like that at least the, the two of you are okay with three. I am kind of yeah. I want to say I'm kind of okay with three. I, I think I'm more I I lean more towards it, but if you could remind if you could remind us what what is what is the benefit of knowing how a candidate stays informed about town affairs. That's a good question, Frank. Hey, I my intent here was to try and tease out a little bit how attuned they are to the larger community. Originally, I had something far more elaborate about, um, you know, engagement in town, you know, boards, committees, prior government service, et cetera. Um, I wanted to get some sense of, of, of their knowledge and attention to um, what, in fact, the vast majority of citizens don't really pay that much attention to, um, perhaps for their mental health. But um, uh, so it, it's somewhat amorphous, somewhat, you know, I'm just curious about, you know, how they find out about what's going on with the town. They read the newspaper, do they, you know, do they, I mean, here's where they would be in, you know, we'd hope if they were an, on a board or committee or involved in some, you know, uh, community organization, League of Women Voters, uh, you know, uh, you know, area, whatever, um, they could mention that. Um, and that would tell us a little bit about basically about civic level of civic engagement, I guess is what I'm looking for. And obviously, if you're new to town, your level of civic engagement, at least with Amherst, would be minimal. And so you might argue that that kind of is unfair to people who just arrived here in the last year or two or three years. And we're certainly not ruling them out. Um, 
So that's, yeah, I don't know. I like the question. Um, I'm just curious about. Isn't it a chance to tell us a little bit about themselves? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the town, but I don't know. So I recommend we keep it. Okay. Lynn? I was going to suggest we move on to four and five. Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Uh, I think, first of all, in four, we can eliminate the opening sentence and yes. just say, tell us about an experience you have, et cetera. And then in five, I would say, please describe the considerations and objectives you'll use for considering changes to the charter, period. Because I think that um, it, 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 whether they're going to say, this is what I would recommend to the council, there's still going to be people that are going to have to sort through whether it has to go to the council, whether it has to go to the legislature, you know, whatever. It's I don't think you need that last part of that sentence. And it shortens both of them. Um, so if I have you correctly, it is simply please describe the considerations and objectives you will use for considering changes to the charter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Judge? Yeah. Um, I've wondered about four a lot. Four is somewhat similar to a question we have and we've asked in many other contexts. Um, I don't know what it really tells us. It's it's kind of like what you said, Rekha, earlier that, uh, you know, it turns out everybody just gets along fine. <laughs> And they love it. Um, I'm not sure it really tells us much. Um, I'm not sure we would lose much if we took it out. Um, but that's something for maybe the others for you to, to weigh in. I just I wonder about how much it really tells us. Um, it might give us a sense of their, you know, uh, I don't know. Five. Um, I. I agree with Lynn that this is the way, this is clearer, but it's still considerations and objectives. I just, what are we asking them here? You know, um, one of the things that I would like to know is how much outreach do they think this body needs to do? Who are they going to talk to? Are they just going to, you know, uh, are they going to, you know, who do they think they need to, to reach out to? Do they do they think they need to reach out to anybody? Do they think that just the nine of them uh, with a little bit of guidance can do this on their own? Um, now, maybe that would be part of their answer to five. So one of the considerations would be we need to do lots of outreach. We need to talk to, you know, counselors, former counselors, uh, town staff, um, citizens, community groups, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I mean, that's what I'd like to hear, but um, so maybe considerations would be part of that. Um, objectives, right? What I guess I'm asking both of you and myself, what what do I mean by describe considerations and objectives? Can maybe. we be any clearer here, or can somebody help me see what I'm not seeing? Is this where they, yeah, this is where they talk about outreach. Is this where they talk about? Because we've already asked about, didn't we earlier about you know places where they think the charter needs improvement or whatever. So this is different. This is more a process question or, a, yeah, I don't know. Yes, Lee. Um, why don't we just try something different? Please name three activities you think should be part of the work plan of the group so i'm trying to in other words i'm trying to them i'm trying to ask them what do you think this group should do to accomplish its work okay so i'm trying to get to some of the questions george is looking at 
It, could you give one thing? Yeah, uh, I think we should hold um, meetings with the following kinds of people. Uh, I think we should do a community survey. I think we should hold several public forums. Uh, in other words, to me, by describing what they think they should do as part of the work plan will allow us to understand what they think is important in terms of input into this. Okay. Actually, with Dwight's phrase, that connects with the question that was removed about the interaction with each other in a way. Okay. Any thoughts, George? Sorry. I like Lynn's emphasis on the work of the committee. It's not so much work style. I mean, it's true, it'd be nice if we could get some glimpse as to whether they're collaborative or whether they're, you know, going to just try to impose their will on everybody. But we all know in any body of nine people, you're going to get multiple work styles. And, um, you know, it'd be nice if everybody was a collaborator, but it usually doesn't work out that way. Um, of course, anyway. So five is more about work plan or, you know, how, how do you how do you think you wish this body should go about organizing its task? What what are the key objectives or goals of this group? And I, I, I don't like the word change. In fact, they probably will recommend some changes, but it's perfectly conceivable that they could go through this process and say, you know, all things considered, having talked and looked at this, we aren't recommending any substantive changes. Maybe there are one or two little things, but uh, so uh, it's work plan, objective goals. How, how are we going to organize this? How are we going to organize our work? Thank you. So it appears then that we should be eliminating the first sentence of number five. Lynn. Yes, I would eliminate the first sentence and I would revise the second sentence to say, please, comma, briefly describe three elements or two elements. I don't care if it's two right, or three. Right. Two or three elements of the work plan for the group. Two or three activities, maybe the understand activities better. Um, six was supposed to stay and I think we'll honor what the request of the chair um, so regarding important information on the interviews what do we think of those final four points bullet points Lynn is your hand up oh I'm sorry no Councillor Ryan could we go back to, I'm, I'm sorry, Rick, I didn't quite catch, with six, you, were, you weren't asking about six, you were asking about the whole set together? Um, so the Six is kind of had, generic, right, I'm sorry. The chair had recommended, requested, I think it would be stronger that six remain as a question. Right. And your question is, do we want to keep it? Oh, well, no, it isn't so many question. I had jumped from number six to go straight to the four bullet points. So I want to go back briefly to five when, when we're ready. Okay, so Lynn? Go to five. Please briefly describe two or three activities or objectives you think should be part is that would that help or does that make it worse just trying to get that as clear as we can get it and maybe this is fine as it is um we're not trying to predetermine the response but we don't want to make it so 
they, 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 they scratch their heads and go, right, you know, work plan is important. Activity is concrete, you know, something we're going to do. Please describe two or three things this body must do. I would just say that should instead of you think. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. In, in five. Get rid of you think. Just say yes. that you that should. Please briefly describe two or three activities that should be part of. Yes. Thank you. Good. I like this. I mean, it'd be nice if we were five instead of six, but. <laughs> nice for three but I think they're all important we'll make this work and um, I could see one or two of the questions not requiring a lot of time from the candidates we have good hands up yeah I want to talk about the bullets yeah yes okay I, I, um, the third bullet, each candidate will be interviewed separately at a specific time given by Zoom and asked the same question. What does that accomplish? Because I think we have to have these interviews as a public meeting. So all candidates can be listening to all the previous candidates. And it gives the, the later candidates an advantage. Um, if I'm not mistaken, because they they'll have listened to, you know, candidate one through twelve. Good. And then I'll respond. And how they're responding. I mean, because this they do have to be in public. No, so you can't, what you're saying is you can't, I mean, it's public in the sense that everyone is in, in the audience and witnessing this. Um, the candidate comes into the interview space in order, one at a time. And they could choose to stay in the audience or they could choose not to. But your point is that those who are going to be scheduled later will have the advantage, in quotes, of watching and listening to everyone preceding them before they get called into the room. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I don't know that that's such a great advantage. Um, Again, if we if we have eight or nine people in a row and we ask them the same question, the eighth or ninth person has the advantage mm -hmm. for that particular question. Yeah. But so far as it's an advantage. Now they have these questions in advance, and I assume any sensible person will have thought about them at least, and some will actually write out their answers. So I guess I'm less convinced of the idea of an advantage and more okay. persuaded by the thought of humanity, <laughs> just interviewing one human being at a time. But um, yeah. Thank you, George. Um, I think if I recall the conversation we had at the last meeting, it was so that we would have a good handle on the time. And so by having specific blocks, it would we would be in a better position to really use the time well, rather than have questions that could go over because everyone is angling to speak a bit more than a previous candidate had done. And also I think because we will be doing this over two days, they would definitely be an advantage on the second day anyway. So. Um, 
I don't I don't think it would there's much that we can do about um how we will handle the group when we're asking the questions in the interview. There will be two days and so those on the second day will have studied what was done on the first day. Any further thoughts on bullet points? Three. I'd like to hear what Athena thinks about this since you've sat in on all the other interviews. I was just calculating the time of how, you know, if you have six questions, two minutes a question, 12 candidates, 144 minutes. So you have about two and a half hours. You could do it in one night. In the past, what we've done is have all the candidates attend and you ask each candidate a question one at a time and you mix them up. Um, we I don't, I'm, I'm trying to recall a time that we had timed interviews and and the committee asked each candidate all the questions before moving to the next candidate. I don't think we've done it that way before. Um, I, I think it makes a little bit of a difference because you're you're appointing a group and you're not you're not hiring one person. Um, in terms of um, fairness, um, the way the the committee and CRC and the council have done the questions in the past has been to mix up who gets asked ask the questions first so that you don't always have the same person getting asked a question first, which which avoids the preference that um, Lynn was pointing out that all the candidates get to ask watch the other candidates be interviewed and one person has the disadvantage of going first. So um, the, the way it had been done in the past was everybody gets sort of a different turn getting asked a question first um, and then everyone gets a turn being able to listen to other questions before they have to respond. I guess in this case, it wouldn't, not everyone would get a question first, but I thought that in the past, that style of interviews had worked very well, even when we had a lot of candidates and people were able to give very succinct answers. I think we limited to, or the, the council limited the responses to maybe just one or two minutes for the last round of interviews that we did for the housing authority. Lynn, you probably recall better than I do, but it was, um, mm. you're talking about you're muted, but I thought it went very smoothly considering the number of applicants and the number of questions. Thank you. Um, George and then Lynn. I guess I come back to the fact that, that um, everyone knows the questions in advance. There's, you know, there would be an advantage if you had no idea what the questions were, then you, and you happen to be coming later, you would have a tremendous advantage. Um, of course, if we change the questions up, then you'd lose that advantage, but we don't do that. Um, we, everyone knows the questions in advance. Um, and so uh, I just don't see that it makes that much difference. And I think it's more humane to just interview a person one at a time and say, we're going to talk to you at 9.15 or 9.30 or 8.15 or whatever. And um, we ask you to be, you know, on Zoom at least 10 or 15 minutes in advance and people make up their own minds what they want to do. They want to, many, some, maybe all of them, I don't know, will show up right at the start and watch in fascination as, as candidate after candidate gets interviewed. Others might have busy lives and better things to do and would show up, you know, a few minutes before their appointed time. We have done this in the past. When I was on GOL, we did do this once or twice. Um, I'm not saying it makes that much difference, um, and I'm not going to die on this hill, but um, given the number of candidates, um, I just think uh, it's, yeah, it's it's just that that's not a very civilized way to interview people, um, respective of their time, respective of, of, of also forming an impression of someone where you ask them a question, and then another question, you get a sense of a human being, you get a sense of who they are. But when you're doing nine or 10 people, 
they all blur into, I mean, you just, you lose a sense of who these people are. Um, and we are trying to form a judgment about them in terms of as an individual, not as a mass. Um, so again, I would suggest it be better for us and I think better for them if we did them in a serial fashion. Lynn and then Athena. Am I correct that right now we look, we think we have 17 and 12 minutes each. It's almost it's two and a half hours of interviews. Okay. Three and a half hours. I'm sorry. Three and a half hours of interviews. Um, I'm willing to try it this way, George. I And I can see the advantage of it. Okay. It's much more the way we do job interviews. Um. I do, I, I personally don't think that trying to do all of them in one night, I don't, I, I, as a, as a member of the committee, I, I'll be dead brain, brain dead by the time we get done with two hours of listening to people's answers. I, I, I've just recently gone through this. I've been co-chairing a search committee for an outside organization and I'm like, by the time I get to two hours, I'm pretty much done with my listening capabilities. So it might be better to, first of all, have two different nights, and second of all, have do it the way George is recommending. Remember, we may also pick up and or lose candidates by the time we actually do this. Thank you. I feel that. Uh, I think we had a, a candidate drop out, another candidate drop out since we last looked at the pool. Um, and I think that I just wanted to mention the the advantage that we had been talking, the committee had been talking about in the past wasn't that they know the questions in advance, but that they hear other people's answers. Um, and so you can, you know, modify your answer based on how other people have answered the question, you might answer differently based on what someone else said. So that was the advantage that was being talked about. Thank you, Athena. I think after George, we will decide. So George. So um, I definitely think we should consider doing it on two different nights, actually in the schedule that um, Anna had made available to us or possible schedules. She sort of, she had actually two nights set aside and then a third night for anyone who was a conflict or whatever. And that third night could then be the night of deliberation as well. Um, I think at the moment, if we, if we have 12 minutes worth of questions and we allow a minute or two for formalities and just you know, hopefully we could do each one in 15 minutes, but we also have to bring people. I mean, if we're if all they're all in the room, then maybe that's a slight advantage, but we have to bring people in um, and, you know, it shouldn't take that long. But so if it's 15 minutes a person and you do eight people, that's 120, that's two hours. You do 16 people, that's another two hours, another night. And so if you, you could do, 17 or 18 with two hours over two nights with a third night set for deliberation hopefully a, a regular meeting schedule for us um with some time set aside if needed for further interviews if needed so i like the idea of not doing it all in one night um again if we do it all in one night which is an option imagine the impact on not just on us, but on the applicants who will have to sit there for two and a half up to three hours. I mean, that just seems cruel. Um, just why are we doing that? Uh, so I think we should do it over two nights. I think we should do it individually. 
and the third night would be set aside for deliberation. We probably shouldn't deliberate after we've been listening to two hours or more of interviews. But yeah. yeah, I know. You, I want to respect the fact that you want us to move on. I, I also strongly feel that we need to do this in on consecutive nights because the lobbying for candidates in between we found we saw that with the school committee um i just the the you can't be dragging this over two or three weeks it's got to be done boom 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 so Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night. I don't know what your calendars look like, but my for me already looks like a disaster. Um, that's all I had to say. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I was wondering if we could have a a bullet bullet that would speak about consecutive nights, but I think that is supplied by bullet three since it says that there will be a specific time given. And so that specific time could occur over um, separate nights. And so I don't think anything needs to change with the document as it is. Final thoughts, George, and then I am looking for a motion. Very, very, very small, picky suggestion. Um, apologize, but under important information, you will have up to two minutes is what I would suggest. It's not a big deal, but anyway, that's it. I don't know what up to one to two minutes means, but I know what up to two minutes means. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Can I have a motion? I move I moved to that we adopt if Athena could scroll to the top. <laughs> we adopt the charter review committee interview questions as amended. A second. We've maxed out our discussion, so we'll go straight to the votes. Um Councillor Ryan. Aye. Lynn. Aye. And I'm an I as well. Three yeses and no noes. Thank you. That was a bit longer than I anticipated. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the joys of being a chair. <laughs> all um, that power, all that power. <laughs> So do we look up dates we we um had some sample dates is that something that we take up at this point or listen first to athena again you have a large group of people who need to be present for interviews in order to be considered as applicants and so I think beginning with, and I can help Anna arrange this, a poll to make sure that we select a date that works for everyone or dates that work for everyone. So um, I would ask the committee to discuss what time they'd like the interviews and what day of the week so that we can come up with some options for a poll. And, um, and then we'll need to confirm that the other members of the committee can make those dates and then we can send a poll to um, to the applicants. Um, in terms of con confirming that the other GOL members can make the dates, that's um, housekeeping and we can do that outside of a meeting. Um, so I think if the committee can come to an agreement on days of the week and times, and then um, we'll just do a couple weeks at the same days and times. Thank you. Councilor Ryan. Question for Athena. I understand polling the members of the committee. Do you, as a practice, 
uh, and have you actually polled applicants as for as per dates as opposed to simply giving them like three possible day? I mean, we should give them some choice, um, but uh, I can't imagine polling 17 or 18 or 19 people to see what dates fit their schedule. Um, but maybe I misunderstood you. Even? My suggestion was to say, we want to pull for a Monday and a Tuesday on a non-council week, and then we can pull the applicants for maybe two separate weeks and try and get a Monday and a Tuesday, get all the applicants either a Monday or a Tuesday, not say, what's your schedule? But go, here are the days of the week and the times that we're considering doing interviews. Which of these options are you available? Okay. I mean, my sense would be we would tell them when the interviews were going to be, and if they couldn't make it, then I guess they really didn't care that much to be on the body. I, I don't think that we should schedule our meetings um, or interviews based on other people's schedules. Uh, they're applying for this, but, you know, I, you know. Yeah. Yes, All right. I'm, I think the most important thing is to make sure the committee can be available for the two or three days, and then we fit the people in, them. and we just go from there. I, I, if we start trying to poll for that many people, we'll, never, we'll be here in December next year. For myself, I wouldn't want to be here <laughs> that long. <laughs> So I, I think we can consider Athena's suggestion to pick consecutive days in the week that would be preferable and then move on from there. How's the right? Just a question again, I'm sorry. Would it make sense more Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? I mean, I hear Lynn's point that you don't want to drag this out. You want them to be consecutive. Um, would it be Monday, Tuesday, Thursday? I mean, one of those days should be a Thursday, it seems. Do we want Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, or some other combination? Lynn? Having recently um, gone through um, looking for a date, I found that using a non uh, counselor Monday is one of the best days to use. And as I'm looking at this, I'm looking at uh, June 10, 11, 12, as possible goals. So Lynn, that's a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? Yeah. And it would hopefully not be in a week. And then we, and we would not have a meeting of GOL that week. We'd, you know, we'd take it off. If we had to. Okay. If we had to. And it sounds like that week, in fact, we do have a meeting. So we do. So okay. that's All right. yeah. All right. So we don't I, have that, that's just my suggestion. I just mm -hmm. found that polling for the meeting that George, you were part of this. Um, you know, yeah. it was easier to choose a Monday. So Monday, Tuesday. Okay. Wednesday or Monday, Wednesday. Tuesday. Wednesday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Okay. Okay. And Lynn had mentioned June 10th. Of course, it is a suggestion. Mm -hmm. Wait, um, just let me see for clarity. So I see here that we have a council meeting on the 3rd, on the 17th, and on the 24th. Mm -hmm. It makes the mathematics uh, very simple. We're getting a pay raise soon, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Question for Athena. Um, how do we proceed from 
here it seems 10th is 10th, 11th, 12th would be preferable. Do we, is there anything more we need to do? Or we could have that as just the block and send that out to see what the various candidates could do. Um, the we'll need to confirm that the other two members of the committee can make those dates. Um, I'm assuming, and I'm looking to confirm that the the time of the interviews that you're thinking about is six thirty. We also need just not the dates, but also the time six thirty. Yes, thirty p.m. And then, so if we can confirm that the other members of the committee um, can do those dates, then. Uh, it will be up to the chair to work with the candidates to let them know about the dates for the interview and figure out how we can fit everybody on which dates decide who goes when according to their schedules. So that's something the chair can work out with committee members. I mean, uh, uh, George is correct that technically according to the policy, we say here is the date of your interview and you just notify them, but I think out of... Let's see out of courtesy, knowing that if someone can't make an interview that they can't be considered, it would be, I think, wise to, we would try. to, to work with them to make sure that they can meet with the committee then. Yeah, Judge? So on SharePoint, I thought that Anna had put a calendar or two with um, various scheduled dates for some of these things, just as you know, thinking out loud. Good, thank you, Athena. And she was scheduling interviews well before June. And I I think June is, is really late. I It may be that's what we have to do. And Lynn has a pretty good feel for our calendar, far better than I do. But June does feel awfully late. Um, and I know that Anna had what? She has dates, you know, she was just thinking out loud, but she had proposed dates in May. Um, I would really, I mean, so again, I'm not sure we're going to decide this tonight, but I would like to chair, unless we have, and maybe Lynn can speak to this, unless there's a clear reason why we have to wait till June, um, I'd like to chair to see if she can, first of all, we're going to need other dates besides those three dates because we're going to give people choices. I'd like the choices to be earlier. I, I certainly don't want to go any later than the date that Lynn has suggested. Um, but Lynn, what's your thought on scheduling? Well, we already missed April 21st. I I can't see the calendars. <laughs> Where are we? May. Okay. May, May 21st, 22nd, 23rd. Okay, that's one set of interviews. Mm -hmm. And then what is 7th, 8th, and 9th? I, there's no way we could be, we, we can't even get their statements of interest by then. Right, no, that's that's not possible. But so, so maybe 21, we, 22, 23. Yeah. And we'd already said that on the 23 yeah. is when we would try to do the that's right. Um, Fincom. Fincom. <laughs> yeah, welcome to GOL, gang. Yeah. Uh, and so the earliest, let me just look at this again. I'm just trying to look at. Well, you could try the last three days of May, 28, 29, 30. But that's probably a council meeting. No, it, we don't have a meeting on the 27th because it's Memorial Day. Uh, the people may be away. Yeah. CRC has a meeting on the 28th. Uh, CRC? Yes. Yeah. Right. So does FinCom. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, the reason I think you're going to have trouble trying to get them much before, I mean, we might try for the week of June 3rd and look at the 4th, the 5th. And the sixth, yeah, that's another option. Is June fourth, fifth, and sixth? 
Okay. Well, at least gives two options, Lynn. I guess the thought was we'd offer people some choice. I I don't believe in choice. I think you just tell people this is what it is. Show up. <laughs> but I agree with you that we should offer choice. So that at least would be some choice. I'm sorry it has to be so late. Uh, it just it's but that's maybe that's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Let me see if I get this correctly. What are the two choices? The two choices would be the week of June 4th and the week June of June 4th, 5th, and 6th. Those are Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, one of which we would meet on anyway. And the other one was June 10th, 10th 11th, and 12th. Any final comments on this? So in that case, I think we can report back to other members of the committee and also um, offer these two dates for the various candidates to see what would be preferable for them. The fact that we're giving them a Monday and Tuesday, the biggest thing, as we all know, the moment you get into grad into June, you're into high school graduations and college graduations. You're already past UMass's graduation. Um, okay, <laughs> I think that's the best we can do on this issue. Um, Thank you. I think it was a valiant efforts and we succeeded in finding those two dates. Moving on. Next item on the agenda is the proposed changes to the nuisance bylaw, which given the time that we have, it would not be efficient to have a discussion on it. But before that, Judge Ryan. Exactly my thought, Chairman. Um, I don't see how we, given the time, we can start this. Um, we have to figure out as a future agenda item. This is something I think you have to begin a meeting with. Um, you, and uh, so, yes, I think we can't take it up tonight. We'd probably, I was trying to find the future agenda um, list, but yeah, I don't think we can do it tonight. Thank you. Lynn? I agree with that, but I would like to have a brief, and I mean very brief, discussion about the extensive nature of the legal feedback and what is reasonable for GOL to do versus what should go back to CRC. And and the reason I, I, re I read I read the whole thing. I read all of it. I read all the legal reviews. Here's my bias, okay? We could spend a lot of time in GOL with this, but what we don't have is the benefit of anybody on GOL who is part of CRC's discussion. And when it asks you to do something like give a definition or tie this back to something else, we're, we'd like have to start over in our knowledge of this bylaw. So it seems to me that the best thing to do is to send it back to, G to CRC first and have them address those issues. Now, I wasn't here for the meeting two weeks ago. I was off doing, frankly, something else. Uh, so I don't know whether maybe you had this discussion and I just wasn't privy to it, but that's my thoughts. Councilor Ryan. 
We did have this discussion, and I started out with your position, Lynn. And after listening, and Athena may not agree with this sequence of events, but after listening to Athena and listening to my colleagues, and I came to the conclusion that we really just have to go through this um, and figure out what questions we might have for CRC, what questions we might have for the lawyer, and um, we can't just kick it to CRC. We can't just send it back to the lawyer. We have to go through it and um, make our best determination and um, and then decide what questions we still have that the lawyer has to answer and what questions we might have, if any, for CRC. Um, and maybe by some miracle, we won't have any questions for the lawyer, any questions for your CRC. We'll, you know, be able to just make a few changes and pass it on. But I don't think we can send it to CRC. Yeah, we have to look at it ourselves. That's what I became painfully convinced of after listening to discussion last time. Liam? Sorry, I just shocked myself. Um, fine, then we get, next time we meet, we need to start with this and we're going to spend the whole night on it. I, I just, anyway, I've said what I had to say. And I understand the position. I'm just, I'm looking for efficiency. And efficiency to me is send it to the people who discussed this for hours. Let them wrestle with it. But obviously, others became convinced. So, thank you. Um, I think we could have one of the chairs from the CRC stop by for the next meeting. And also, since there are some spots in the bylaw that have to do with enforcement, we could have someone from the enforcing authority also stop by. Um, as well, and we could work with them to get most of the responses from the lawyers answered as well as ours. Councilor Ryan. I'm going to make a plea for staff that if we do request that they be present, which we certainly may and in many cases must do, we be very clear on exactly what it is we're going to ask them. I don't think we should have them come to the next meeting because we have no idea yet what questions we have for them. And it would be, I think, uh, not appropriate for them to have to be here for the two hours as we make our way through this. For the one moment, we might say, oh, Rob Mora, what, what about this? Or Gabe Ting, what about this? We have to go through it and we have to decide you know, if we have questions about enforcement, if we have questions about, you know, inspections or whatever, um, then we would reach out through Paul and ask that they be present and we'd have specific questions for them. We might even be able just to send it to them and they could respond, uh, you know, but I don't think we should invite them to our next meeting or any meeting if we don't already know exactly what we're going to ask them. And they should also be at the top of the agenda. Um, it's just not fair to them. Um, so I agree we might have to ask people, and if we have to, we should, but we shouldn't do it until we know exactly what it is we want to know. Thank you. Athena? I did email the committee asking that question to yes. please send questions in advance so that if there are questions pertaining to enforcement, we can ask Chief Ting to come and speak with the committee. Um, if the committee feels there are questions that CRC ought to answer, then I think it's completely reasonable to make that request of CRC. It's happened in the past that a committee has sent questions back to the, the prior committee. I think kicking something back to the earlier committee it creates a circuitous process in terms of the, the legislative process. And Lynn, what you said about efficiency, I think that contradicts the, the 
the desire for efficiency to have things go back and forth and back and forth, just my opinion. Um, but I would encourage members to go through and prepare questions so that those can be shared with staff and CRC in advance of the meeting, or at least the, the chair. Thank you, Lynn. So I rarely ever do this, but I respectfully disagree. <laughs> and the reason I respectfully disagree is the following. I'm going to use an example. By the time rental registration came to GOL, CRC had done an amazing job. And it did have to go back to CRC three times before it ever got to GOL. Maybe it got to GOL one other time. The recommendations from the lawyers were, I think, three in nature. And we were able to clean them up in about an hour in one evening. When I looked at this bylaw and I looked at the recommendations, I just said to myself, well, I guess I'm going to have to learn nuisance bylaw all over, which wasn't our job. And it just seems to me like it's not a circuitous thing. We had a legal review. There were so many legal review issues about definitions and stuff like that. Send it back to the committee that spent the time discussing this, then send it to us again. But I'll, you know, I'll, I, I just don't agree in this case. I think there's more there than this committee should have to wrestle with. So that's my opinion. And normally, Athena and I don't disagree. But we have to agree to disagree, right? Okay, thank you. So we have a conjuring. Should, should we make a motion to figure out where to go from here? No, we're going to, no, the quandary, I, I'm hearing what the group decided last time was that we will tackle this okay. and that we will then decide what to send back to CRC and whether or not we need further legal review and if whether or not we need to meet with um, the law enforcement or the inspection, you know, mm -hmm. other staff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Athena? I don't think it was the committee's decision to continue the review. I think those were conversations that happened outside the committee meeting. So it would be per perfectly appropriate to make a motion to refer the um, the changes to, or the comments back to CRC and ask them for input prior to the next um, GOL meeting. That's perfectly appropriate. It wasn't a decision of the committee. Okay. I move that we have CRC review the legal review comments and provide to the extent possible additional information or recommendations for additional changes and send it back to us for final review. Is there a second? Second. It Oh, you second it? Yeah. Oh, okay. So that leaves room for discussion. Councilor Ryan. So I respectfully disagree. Um, <laughs> I, again, back to, and I don't want to keep quoting Athena here, but last time we had this discussion, I was in Lynn's position. By the time we were done, she's correct. We did not make a decision. Motion is perfectly in order. There was no motion made. The consensus was, or my understanding of the consensus, but there was no formal decision, was that this would be on the agenda for the next meeting, which it was, is, and that we would start working our way through it. It is on the agenda for tonight's meeting, and we were supposed to start working our way through it, but we do not have the time. I agree with Lynn. It's not going to be a pleasant experience. Um, I don't have an answer to the larger question. But I don't think it's fair to kick it back to CRC. Um, 
until we've made at least an effort to go through it and figure out what should we want CRC to look at and what we want. Right now, we're basically just saying, look at this thing and, you know, look at the lawyer's comments and tell us if you want to make any changes. I don't, I think it's not, that's not what we're supposed to do. As painful as this is, and it is painful, I've been looking at this thing now for a couple of days, actually a week at least. Um, but anyway, I I can't support this motion. That doesn't mean it won't pass, but I think we just have to, and I don't know how we're going to do it in terms of our schedule, but we have to find a time in our schedule to go through this thing and decide what we want to do with it. We can't do that tonight. If we kick it back to CRC, we're basically just kicking the can down the road. In so, my humble I'm opinion. I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, I was going to say we had, um, we've exceeded at two hours. Um, perhaps what we could do is follow up on the email that was sent so that if we have questions, those are questions that could be answered by staff and answered by um, the chairs of CRC. Um, I will say as a member of CRC, now that we've taken up solar bylaw, if this goes back to the CRC, I don't know when it's going to come, how long that's going to take. Um, and so if we have questions, I believe we could send them to Athena. They could be compiled and then distributed to those who would be able to answer those questions. Lynn. So in the interest of trying it, I'm going to withdraw my motion and ask that we take this up first thing in two weeks and to the extent possible, we actually each you know, study it like we have and see where we feel comfortable diving in or we need additional assistance. Does the withdrawal of emotion require a second? It, um, Athena, he needs you need at Councilor Ette needs to agree. I agree. Okay. So can we move to adjourn? <laughs> yeah, one more item before <laughs> um one more. So we had actually um Councilor Ryan. No, I'm sorry. Uh Mr. Chair, yes, we I'm afraid it is late. I appreciate that, but we have minutes we need to approve. I think there are people out there that would like to see our minutes. And we also need to say something about our next agenda. We have a future agenda items. Correct. So, Isn't that on the agenda? So we unfortunately at present do not have minutes. Right. Um, no, we don't have future agenda items. Okay, well. <laughs> yeah. um, and we, just as a reminder, we do have the town manager evaluations, but we're giving some assignments to do. We should take those assignments as seriously as we can. Um, but I, I think, like was mentioned, um, please, we should send our questions to Athena so that they could be distributed to the staff. So can I make a motion to approve the minutes of February 22nd, March 7th, March 21, and April 4th? Do those minutes exist in the packet? I hope so, because they're on the agenda. If they're not, then I guess I can't make the motion. I, I haven't been able to access the packet, but... Um, that's a very good question. They're not in the packet. Then we can't have that motion. Okay. If you need help accessing the packet, get in touch with me offline and I'll help you. No, but I, it's just, it wasn't up. So, um, but I just hoped that it was up, but they're not up, so we can't move on them. Is that correct? That's a question. Yes. 
All right. So if you would like, you could transmute your motion into a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. Second. Okay. You have to take roll call. Lynn? Aye. That's the way. I guess. <laughs> what am I going to do for the rest of my night? I mean, you know. Anyway, aye. <laughs> and I'm an aye. <laughs> you didn't miss a gym. Excellent job. Nice job. Excellent job. Very nice. Sorry Thank you so much, Councilor Ate. Jeffress. Thank you, Athena, as always. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, everyone. Yes. Thank you, Athena. Yeah. You're welcome. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Good night.